Welcome back. Well, get ready to laugh your way to a fresh start with Suhail Issa's a debut one-man show, Beginning Again. By day, he's a doctor. At night, he's a hilarious comedian who unpacks the complexities of our post-COVID world with wit and charm. After touring the country for the past two years, Issa has finally released his show for streaming on his platform. Suhail Issa joins us in the studio for more of this conversation. Maybe I should be saying Dr. Issa. Thank you well, so much. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a comedian today. You're a comedian today. <laughs> yes. But you can't remove it from from you know the the fact that you've got a, a definitely, day job. definitely and we're going to talk not. a little bit about doctors because you know i don't yeah, want to say yeah. anything because you know do, being a doctor in South yeah, Africa they're, they're not getting the best the best lights at the moment nothing whatsoever but you've just come back from touring yes how was it talk to us a little bit about it was that amazing amazing I, I had the opportunity to travel around the entire country hmm. uh traveled across all our provinces did shows all over met lovely people ate delicious food uh, and uh, really got to appreciate how beautiful our country actually is. Yeah. Uh, also, in fact, got an opportunity to travel, well, not overseas, but uh, I went to Botswana, did my show in Botswana and Gaborone as well. It's just been um, a very interesting time in South Africa as mm -hmm. you get to witness post-COVID recovery. Yes, right? yes. And that's exactly what I would imagine that even with the new tour, you're mm. kind of discovering how people have picked up the pieces or had to or are still picking up the pieces from having to endure a very hard lockdown and a mm. very difficult mm. two years. What have you witnessed so far? So, I mean, that's the whole title of my show. It's called Beginning Again. Mm. And it's about my journey coming out of COVID. Uh, it's a story of hope, optimism, and it's there to make one laugh. Uh, I talk about my life, my experiences, uh, some of the struggles I've been through. And I feel like uh, a lot of South Africans can relate to that on a much deeper level than just, uh, you know, comedy. And uh, the majority of people that have come to my shows after, after the show have come up to me and said, wow, I've, I feel a lot better about the last two to three years that we, we've been through. Uh, and with regards to the arts, the performing arts, that almost got destroyed uh, because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, you know, we suffered uh, because there were no live shows, there were no live performances, and no one wants to perform to a laptop screen, <laughs> uh, you know, which was the majority of our, our shows in the first year post-COVID. There weren't any live shows happening, and there weren't any... Uh, people were, were, were leaving their arts and, and, and giving up on their arts. Mm. And I, I said to myself, I need to, I need to do this. I have to do this. I have to show South Africa that there is hope, that there is something... Uh, uh, that we can do coming out of this terrible pandemic. Well, of course, you, you wear two hats, right? And, and one is medical yeah. doctor, and then the other one, of course, is a comedian. Yeah, that's right? yeah. And, and how do you find that? How well, you know, there's you... a lot of doctors doing more than one <laughs> thing at the moment. <laughs> there are a lot of doctors that are moonlighting yeah. as other things. We'll talk a little bit about yes, escapees yes, yes. as well, you know, mm. because, you know, you can, be, you can be anything if you're a doctor these days. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how do you cross the two? And how do you manage crossing between the two? Or do you bring a little bit of comedy into the, into the, the medical room? Well, I think, I think uh, it, it's getting a bit weird now because some of, some of the time my patients recognize me. Ah. And then I'm like, uh, this, this is uncomfortable. Hey, uh, uh, doc, but before you go, can I get a <laughs> <laughs> quick autograph? Uh, so uh, that's, that's becoming a bit interesting for me. Uh, I, I, try, I try and talk about my experiences as a doctor because we, as doctors, we interact with a wide variety of South Africans yeah. all the time. So it's easy for me then when I step on stage to relate to a wide, diverse audience because I often interact with them. I, I've, I've tried to immerse myself. I, 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 you know, I speak Zulu because I'm from KZN. So you speak Zulu fluently? Yeah, I'm from Zulu. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I do. And so I use that to, 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 to speak to my patients and to help them when I, I'm communicating with them in the hospital. And then when I go on stage, it also helps me to, uh, you know, relate to a, a much wider audience. Mm. And so I use whatever skills I have uh, to do my best at both my professions. It really, uh, it's, it's refreshing to see somebody who can be authentically South African, you know, in, in, in different ways, in different ways mm. of being able to mm. operate, never mind the relatability, but also, I often say, you know, if you're in South Africa, at least learn one language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Besides I always English. tell people, I'm like, you have to learn a vernacular language. You have to. Even if it's just for the jokes. Yeah. Because most of them are about you. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking about jokes about you, yeah. I, I want to talk a little bit about what you've witnessed so far being um, a medical doctor at yes. all. And about how doctors have been very... Um, 
what's the word to use? I mean, doctors have been very popular of, of, of note, you know, uh -huh. of recent, um, yeah, yeah. for obvious reasons. Yes, yes. What, what's your take I in terms of what's been transpiring in the country where doctors are concerned? Because, you know, it's... it's, it's Are we specifically talking about that? We, we're talking about doctors that are able to escape and go to Tanzania and then be found oh, in the border. That's, and, that's. And, and because the truth of the matter is, you are all doctors. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Look, uh, with regards to the, that specific uh, scenario, uh, uh, and we were saying this off off camera. Um, that specific doctor went to my my medical school. She was, I think, a few years above me. And at the graduation ball, uh, she won the award for the doctor most likely not to make any money out of being a doctor. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> No. So, I mean, if that, if that tells you anything, um, yeah, I think yeah. That, that speaks volumes as to, as to what we're seeing now in the news. Uh, with regards to doctors doing other things, look, I've kept it clean. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing comedy. Mm -hmm. You're not visiting I, I hope you guys, of recent. Yeah, look, if you hear about, uh, uh, about me breaking people out of prison in the next few years, hey, Things happen, man. <laughs> you know, it's this economy. It's the hunger. Co COVID. <laughs> it's COVID. <laughs> Blame COVID. Yeah. For everything. And, and, and you know, like, I feel like ch COVID has actually changed a lot of our lives. Uh-huh. Um, in ways that, that I think it's unimaginable. I think there are mm. a lot of people that are still dealing from the trauma of mm -hmm. COVID-19, which we never really speak about. There mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. other South Africans that are still dealing with the post-COVID symptoms mm -hmm. that are still manifest. I had COVID, so I, I have first-hand account of what it feels like to have been in that mm. grip of mm. fear. My mm. mother and my whole family had it. My, my mother had it mm. to a point where one day she actually thought that she was not going to make it alive for the next day mm. because it was, mm. it was just her mm. body was just shutting down. How then do, do you know, you, you almost experience that from a place of having to be on the front line? Mm, because that's mm. a different kind of trauma. That's a trauma yeah. where it's not even about you. It's about mm, the patients. Mm. But at the end of the day, it's also about you. Mm. So I'll give you some insight into that. I actually, at the end of 2019, uh, and I talk about this in my show, I left my, my job. I left being a doctor. I, I think I felt a bit of burnout. And I also was wanting to pursue my passion, which was stand-up comedy. Mm. And so I left, and then COVID happened, and that completely crushed me. But at the sa same time, my country needed me. And, you know, I had the opportunity to work in the emergency unit, which is where I still currently work. And working in the emergency unit, it was, it was heartbreaking for me because this is the first time, I think, in, 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 in history where the majority of doctors did not know how to treat this country. A condition mm. and so we'd sit there and we'd watch people gasping for air fighting for their life and not knowing what to do to go into work every day f and and to feel like you're a failure it has a a, a, a a drastic effect on one's one's mental health and I was ready to give up on everything else as well I was ready to give up on comedy give up on I, I, I was in a very deep dark place and mm. I, I spoke to my family and I said yeah I think I'm gonna give up this comedy thing and they said to me but you've got a story to tell got something that you know you've, you've witnessed you've been through the depths and the dark uh, 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 the darkest uh, parts of this so why not make light of it make people laugh heal them through laughter Tr just go and try it and so my first show I did to a room of like 35 people with COVID restrictions and we had like 50% capacity and after doing that first show I said I think the country needs to see this I think more people need to see this show I think I want I want to do this not just for money or for fame or for anything else, but because genuinely I feel like I've got something to say and I know that people will heal from this. And so going from 35 to my last couple of shows, which is like over a thousand people, has just been uh, an, an amazing experience for me. And having people come up to me after the show and say, you know, I lost a loved one. Uh, I, I have a, a, a child that was affected by COVID. Mm -hmm and we thought we were gonna lose my child. I haven't felt, I haven't, a, a lady came up to me after my shows and said, I haven't felt happy in so long. And when I saw that you were doing the show, I came to the show and for the first time, she had tears in her eyes and she said, for the first time in months, I actually felt happy. And I said, you know, even if I don't make money off of this, even if I don't, you know, get fame or accolades or anything else, I think that for me is the most important part of this this journey for me okay so very quickly before my producers kill me mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about where i can find your show so my show is available on my website suhailessa.com i chose to put it on my own platform to be able to market it myself and to get it out to the 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 wider south african public 
so if you want, you go to my website, SuhailEsa.com. You, it's only 50 bucks, and you can watch it as many times as you want, at home, in the comfort of your own home, with your kids, with your family, bring the dogs, bring everyone, mm -hmm. and enjoy it. Definitely that's looking what it's forward to it. For. Uh, and thank you very much for, for really bringing such a, a beautiful, authentic perspective to, to just the realities that we've all been distressing over in just, uh, in, in the, what, four, three years or so. And never mind that, we now have to contend with load shedding over and above everything else. Sahil Essa there, a comedian, as well as a medical doctor, just uh, talking to us a little bit about his tour. It's now over, but you can check it out at his website as well and enjoy some of that uh, beautiful laughter, which actually is the best uh, kind of medicine, isn't it?